Recurrent corneal erosion is really when the eye has had some form of trauma or has some form of dystrophy where there are, you're born with a condition where the surface of the eye uh, is not stable. And so when you uh, sleep at night, when the eye dries out or when the eye is the driest, when your lid opens, it takes away that, that fragile bit of surface skin on the, the cornea and results in quite extreme pain. And this can often happen as a cycle. So what you need to do is to break that cycle of, um, uh, of, the, of the epithelium tearing away. Now, the surface layer, when it heals after you've had a recurrent erosion, heals very quickly within 24, 48 hours. But what doesn't happen is it doesn't settle on the layer below. Um, for, you know, changes don't go back to normal for about a year, we know from, um, from looking at them from a scientific point of view. Um, so the treatment of that really is to break the cycle of dryness and the, t the epithelium coming away and causing a, a problem every night. So that involves lubricant eye drops, can sometimes involve pl punctal plugs, where we plug off the lower and upper lids, keep the tears against the surface of the eye for longer. We sometimes use contact lenses. In extreme forms, if it's still not settled, we will consider using a laser treatment. So we're quite lucky now that we have several treatments available for keratoconus which we didn't have before. Um, so if I go back to the beginning, when you have keratoconus, the shape of your eye is, uh, is conical and so the focusing uh, in your eye is not, is not normal and you will get halos or glare or um, uh, sort of uh, misshape, mis misshapen images. And um, the treatment for that really is in milder forms we will use uh, glasses prescription. If it gets worse then we will need to consider contact lenses and often contact lenses can smooth over all the irregular irregularities or most of them. Um, in patients previously we didn't have a treatment that could stop their disease and we're lucky now that we have a treatment called cross-linking which is where the uh, conical, um, the progressive conical nature of the disease can then be halted or we can uh, prevent or delay the progression and we do that by um, uh, an, a process of causing the collagen fibers which make up the cornea to cross-link and bind just like a, a, um, a wicker basket would and we strengthen it so then it prevents it from progressively becoming conical. Uh, that's a treatment that we didn't have previously and is nice approved now and uh, if your keratoconus is progressing that is, some, that is a treatment that you will often be offered now um, to prevent you from going on to the later stages. In the later stage of the, as of the disease you're really considering some form of surgical treatment and, and that, that involves either putting um, corneal uh, 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 rings into the eye and what that does is it basically flattens and, and makes the shape of the cornea much more regular. Uh, that can be, in uh, can be effective in a small subgroup of patients, but is not always effective. Um, and then in severer forms, we then have to consider s corneal transplantation, either full thickness transplantation if there's deep scarring, or um, as we like to often do is um, a partial thickness transplantation. In addition to all of that, often with keratoconus there are coexisting features, so the patients will often have a history of what we call atopy. So these are, uh, this is the atopic triad of asthma, eczema and hay fever, and often that can affect the eye, can cause the patients to then rub their eyes, and eye rubbing is a risk factor for keratoconus. So we will then um, treat the, uh, the reason that they're having to rub their eyes and reduce the inflammatory disease that comes as part of their keratoconus. Could you add, uh, just to manage patient expectations, that this is typically a treatment that halts the progression as opposed to improves their vision? Yeah. And could you also discuss somewhat what kind of vision they might have after a corneal transplant? So, um, cross-linking doesn't um, 
uh, improve the vision. That's not its primary aim. Its primary aim is to halt the disease progression and prevent you from then requiring a corneal transplant later on. Um, and so although some patients notice some stabilization of vision, there it's not necessary that that will get, get rid of your uh, prescription or your astigmatism that you have. Um, what was the other thing? Well, actually, even before that, it actually, you could get to a point after the cross-linking that you could become suitable for some vision correction, am I right? Through either the intacts or through mm. some other trigger? You can, but it's debatable. But it's fine? It's debatable. You don't want to address it? Laser clinics will, but actually, because that's how you get your patients, but actually the trial data is not wonderful. But if you want me to no, go into it. Leave it if you like. Uh, the next question after that was, um, what do they see after coronal transplant? So after you've had a corneal transplant uh, for keratoconus, it's either um, a full thickness or a partial thickness transplant, often which requires lots of sutures to the eye or stitches to the eye. And if you have that type of procedure, it often takes up to a year for you to get visual rehabilitation. Um, we don't normally remove stitches from the, the eye or all the stitches for about 12 to 18 months after surgery. So it can take uh, a reasonable length of time for us to rehabilitate your vision back to where you would like it. Right. You'd like it. You didn't like that, did you? Well, where you'd like it. Okay. Very big. Right, let's, um, we'll do that again. So um, for keratoconus, the, there are two different forms of transplantation, either a full thickness transplant or a partial thickness. Both of those require stitches to the eye, and we don't normally remove the stitches for about 12 to 18 months, or certainly not all of them. Um, so it can take up to about a year for us to get f optimal vision um, back to the patient. So um, it isn't an immediate treatment, but it, on the whole, in the long term, you do get vision, vision back to, um, to, um, uh, to a good, to good functioning standard. It wasn't good either, but never mind, it's fine. Oh. We're not going to get any better. <laughs> Is that you can't be pleasing everyone. No, no.